and that'll get rid of the whole bevel because we don't even need that and then the start out line which I'm gonna bump up to not one one always looks terrible for me I'll do 0.5 and we're gonna out click and move around now if you select keep lines from crossing um if each text was like a, like a square or and one invaded the other's bubble it wouldn't be allowed to because the lines cannot cross so I'm going to keep that selected for the back layer so now we have our text and we have our backdrop created on hide all and now we have the text right here on the backdrop and it's looking pretty neat Alright, so I'm just gonna select the backdrop and it's not gonna let me do it, is it? Plain. It's not gonna let me scale it really. Oh, there you go. Alright, scale it up. That way it covers everything and the text fits perfectly. Now if I was to do a quick render we have our 3D text already created and I think that looks really nice but it kinda seems like this S is dropping into the backdrop so we're gonna have to fix that. So select and move and I'm gonna orbit up and I'm gonna control, well click on one and then control click on the next one and let's just select both of them. And now we're going to want to move it up. Just a little bit like so. And if we were to now render it again. Looks a lot better now. Now there's no shadow because there's no light. And without a light you can't create a shadow. Hence in the middle of the night you don't have a shadow underneath because it's all dark. So, except for the moon, you know, but so I guess that wasn't the best way to explain it, but whatever. Um, we'll come, we'll go to lights in a second. I think we should color everything first so everything looks a little bit more easy to understand. And I would actually click that. There we go. Alright, now hit M and this will bring up your list of materials. So, this right here will be the background. I'm going to unselect um, this lock so that these two are not locked. I'm going to make this a really, really white, light gray. I'm going to make this like a medium dark gray. And we're going to mess with the specular levels. 15. Let's add some light onto it. And the glassiness about 20 which brings some contrast in and soften at one I actually think I'm almost going to soften down and put this on the back oh I think the dark gray is a bit too dark at least for my taste I think that looks a lot nicer now for the second one um, make a nice dark gray 50 20, 1, no not 1, yeah 1, and then, okay, unselect this again, Wait, what was this one, this one was white, dark, or light, dark, this will be dark, light, and this will be more reverse than the other one for the text, now we have our second one created, I'm just going to go to the third one real quick and create this, drop that down, unselect, 50, 20, 10, 1, and that's the beginning. Um, make a medium gray, and then darker gray. And now we can orbit around so we can view our text. Put this on the back layer, I think. 
I always like the darker on the back layer. And then I can just quickly render this out. And that's what the text looks like on our backdrop, which I think looks really neat, ignoring the empty space. So we can switch our view back around and re render it. And that's our nice text we have. So, one last thing we need to do is add a light. Now, you're going to want to do standard light. And you can, the two lights that I would recommend for this text be either an omni light, but that's a lot more complicated. And, or you could just use a skylight. The skylight parameters are already set for you. You're just going to want to enable casting shadows. Make that about six. No, I'll make that about five for now. Um, I usually don't mess with the ray bias, but you can make it like one, one or fifteen, and then if you just click, you have your light. Now we can render this out. It's gonna take a little bit longer. Um, but I'm rendering the rays per sample is your quality, so I'm rendering really low so that this will render a lot quicker since 3D Max and Camtasia don't mix well on my computer for some reason it always is a lot slower so and bit of suspense here huh well while this is going I might as well talk a little bit so um about the video editing contest that I'm gonna have coming up in I wanna have a hundred subscribers before I start that way there'll be a lot more entries the more entries the bigger the competition and eventually um there'll be more and there'll be greater prizes this prize will just be an Xbox Live 360 three months so it's a nice prize for my first contest so um be waiting for that and it looks like our text is done rendering. Um, you can see it has a really, really nice shadow to it. You could probably even bring this text down if you wanted to in the Z space because it is a bit high off the ground, but uh, it depends on what you're going for. And that's the simplest way there is to making text um, for the backdrop. I think this was applied to the backdrop, but I sure do hope that's some darker. Yeah like that. Let's make this ray bias like three though. That way it's will render a lot quicker. I just want to see what the backdrop will look like though. Cause I don't think there's enough contrast. And I still don't think there's gonna be so let's try one more thing. Right here. Oh cancel sorry. Now make this like white white and then Break down the glossiness, and that'll make some nice contrast. Now, if we render it out, so that's I think contrast looks good. So that's another way to do that. So this is 3D text in 3D Studio Max. Very simple and very quick. Text looks pretty awful due to the race per sample, but the backdrop does look a little bit nicer, at least in my opinion. So I'm going to cancel this. You're going to want to render at about 20, 25, you know. Then that looks really neat when you render out that high. So I'm not going to go over rendering and saving files. Um, maybe that will be a later tutorial. If you guys have any requests for any programs, feel free to contact me. Um, I'll give anything a shot, any program, especially if it's a good program and worth the download. I'd love to learn it and experiment in it, so just let me know. And Riss Thatcher, you guys should check out his channel. He uploads a lot of videos. He's a really nice guy. So, you know, just I really hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. That's really what I hope. So if you really did like this, you know, check out my other videos and post your samples what you made using this tutorial um, maybe in the future I'll go over animating stuff in 3d studio max or rendering 
so that you can use it in Adobe After Effects which would be a lot easier to animate in so anyway um, this is Zeta Lonix and I'm signing off now